Hey legends, welcome along to the Hellmouth Hotline. I'm your host, Rodney Stewart, and Buffy the Vampire's there once more. I almost completely forgot to record this podcast tonight. I am juggling so many balls at the moment, it's not even funny. And uh, I'm trying to cut smoking as well, so it's currently Monday at uh, shortly after 8. I'm sitting down to record this. And uh, I haven't had a cigarette since 11 a.m. Saturday past, so I'm a couple of days into it now. And doing not so bad this time. But to keep myself occupied, I'm doing a mess load of other things, so it's it's all content. You know, if I promise to put a podcast out here on a Monday and a Friday, and it doesn't happen, check the website coinsagemedia.com because there'll be content going somewhere else that is a big story for another time I did try something regarding the podcasts which was a pretty good idea but it turned out to be a little bit of overkill so I had to go back to the beginning and start over again so I've been up to my neck and that there plus a little bit of client work here and there Uh, busy busy times but Buffy the Vampire Slayer season 3 episode 17 Enemies. Now this is an episode, I there's a nice little twist in it, so if you don't want to know what the twist is, jump out of this podcast right now, go check out the episode and indeed the series, and then if you're inclined to, come back and hang out with me, while we appreciate these old episodes. So in this one, we eventually, the, 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 all the skeletons fall out of the closet in this episode. I did say, I think, in one of the past episodes right here, is that everything that's going on, us as a viewer know exactly what's happening, but Buffy and the Scooby gang being the heroes of the show, I was saying, they're getting pretty damn far into the series without finding anything out, and this episode, everything comes out into the open. And of course, Faith is now working with the mayor, who is indeed the big bad on this series and at the beginning of the episode Buffy and Faith at this point Buffy still hasn't got a clue that Faith has went over to the dark side completely let's just say we just know she is faltering having killed the uh, mayor's assistant but at this point uh, Buffy still thinks oh you know she's 50-50 50-50 here, maybe able to help her yet, maybe, maybe not, sort of deal, but at the beginning of the episode, they're out on patrol, and uh, this demon pops up and offers to sell them the books of Ascension, he's trying to make $5,000 to get out of Sony deal, and uh, yes, they pretty much just chase him off, Faith of course is going to kill him, saying as he's a demon, uh, they're not going to spend $5,000 on books I know nothing about, more or less. But uh, Buffy stops Faith from killing this demon because he, he's one of these characters that got more and more popular as the season went ahead. You would get these random little demon sort of characters that were more like people than they were humans, or demons, sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, you got these characters that... Uh, and in particular, the the uh, the angel spinoff, you kind of got demons that were classed as demons that were actually like from other dimensions, you know, so more like alien life kind of deal. But I digress. I don't even know why the heck I went down that one. Essentially, this guy isn't a big enough threat that Buffy feels he should be killed. Let him go. He's just uh, your run of the mill sort of. He's like the, the Xander of the demon community, let's just say. So, uh, yes, Faith reports to the mayor what went down, and he asks her to kill the demon and take the books. And she does. And after doing that, she goes to see Angel and tries to seduce him, just being her nasty little self. Uh, but he remains loyal to Buffy, and, uh, you know doesn't take Faith up on her advances and whatnot in Faith. She manages to kiss Angel on the cheek as she departs. Just a friendly gesture and leaving. But Buffy is just coming into the 
the mansion and she sees this happening. So uh, she disappears off in a bit of a jealous rage, more or less. Um, the mayor then hires a mysterious cloaked sorcerer to take Angel's soul and unleash Angelus. So this was the, the idea here. When Faith went to see him, she was going to try and seduce him, give him the moment of happiness. When that didn't work, the uh, the mayor decides he's going to hire this guy to use magic to take the soul off Angel again. And again, spoilers as we go forward in this. I completely forgot that Angelus makes an appearance... I'm saying that loosely in this episode, but because uh, I enjoy whenever Angelus turns up, and uh, I, I just he's nasty. But there's a lot of good one-liners with Angelus. It has to be said. So we do get a little bit of him in this episode. Um, yes. Uh, back to the story, Xander. He managed to get a hold of the demon's address by bribing Willie the Snitch. Buffy and Faith find the demon dead. Then you know, they report back to Jay's what this is and blah blah blah. Books of Ascension, what are we gonna do? Oh, we need to get the Books of Ascension. Find out where this guy's at. But uh Xander beats them all to it, gets the address, and uh yes, Buffy and Faith find the demon dead and uh you know Faith killed the demon, obviously, took the books, gave them to the mayor. Um, but uh, Buffy's worried by Faith's strange behaviour about it. And Buffy tells Willow that she saw Faith kiss an angel. Willow urges Buffy to talk to Angel about it. Um, yeah, we skip forward a little bit in time here. Faith comes back to Angel in the mansion on the pretext of apologising for her behaviour the night before but she froze blood onto his vest that he's wearing and uh, a sorcerer steps out from the shadows he chants a spell lights flash all over the place you see Angel's eyes kind of lighting up and he yells and he loses his soul uh, Angelus makes his triumphant return and the one-liners and quips start straight away. Uh, Angel pulls Faith to him. They kiss before he starts beating her up. More quips, more one-liners. The two fight. Faith ends up on top, holding a stake to his heart. and They manage to come to a truce and they seal it with a kiss after Angel agrees to meet the mayor. So it's... Uh, Things are looking bad at this point in the episode. Uh, Willow, she tells the Scooby gang that the, the mayor's computer files were emptied before she was able to access them. She's been constantly trying to get into the, 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 the files, but the, you know, the mayor obviously seen her coming. And if he didn't, Faith would have told him. So uh, all the files have been deleted or put somewhere safe. Uh, Buffy then leaves to find what's going on with the mayor. While Wesley takes... Cordelia and the rest of the group to the Hall of Records to find information on the mayor. Um, Cordelia is trying her hardest to get Wesley to do the dirty with her. She's took a real shine to him in this series, but in saying that, a big part of it is to annoy Xander as well. Um, Faith Brings Angel to the mayor, and he learns that the mayor is impervious to harm. Of course, we find that out earlier in the episode. There's a, a knife on the mayor's desk. Well, it's that's an, one of these knives that you open envelopes with. For the kids that don't remember what envelopes are actually are, it's for emails only, relatively new at this stage. Uh, but the mayor has his little letter opener, and Angel throws it. To stab him in the heart with it. Friends to do it. And the mayor says come on ahead then. But Angel not knowing. That the mayor is impervious to harm. Finds out whenever the mayor lifts his hand. And the knife. Pierces through his palm. And he removes it. The skin closes over. 
and he tells him the guy can't be harmed in any way. Um, Angel doing his hardest to uh, ingratiate himself with the mayor and been the big main baddie in this series. Uh, he tells the mayor of his plans to torture and kill Buffy and uh, the mayor's like, that's good, no problem. I'm good with that there, just don't make it too quick. And Angel says, that's my favourite type of murders. Um, Angel and Faith walk to Buffy's house and on the way they meet Xander. He's walking up the street and uh, he's like, oh, there you are. It's about time you guys showed up. And he tries to warn him about what's going on, but... Uh, Angelus punches him, knocks his ass out, and uh, Angel and Faith lure Buffy to Angel's mansion, where they say they are fighting for the other side now. And Angel reveals himself to be Angelus, and the the acting between all three characters right here, Buffy, Angel, and indeed Faith, in the sequence, the last showdown. Of this episode is fantastic, particularly Buffy. I felt in this one where she was like, you know, she pretty much in this moment of this episode has been stabbed in the back, but not just be a person that she felt could be a friend, maybe a sister at one point, but the man she's in love with as well. Now, again. Spoilers, if you're still listening to this podcast at this point in the episode and you haven't seen Enemies yet, go check it out because I'm going to spoil it for you right here because I had completely forgotten what way this episode went. Couldn't remember the the whole thing of Angelus making his triumphant return in this episode. So be warned, if you're still here and you listen to the last of the episode, it is going to be spoiled for you. But, and watching it, I was in there with fresh eyes, more or less. Uh, I, I didn't know the, the overarching story of where things was going, but how it gets there at this point was very mismatched in my memory. Um, yes, yeah, so Buffy is knocked out by Angel. She wakes up, she's chained to the wall, and Angel and Faith are getting ready to torture her. And uh, Faith gets in there and she kind of goes into the the James Bond villain moment where she's like, you know, talking over her big plans and whatnot and she's going through everything about her painful childhood with her mother who drank too much and her life as a slayer living in Buffy's shadow more or less, she's like, you know uh, because, you know Fifth became the slayer when uh, at the end of season one Buffy dies briefly comes back, but then another Slayer turns up. Once a Slayer technically dies, the the mantle is kind of passed on to the next one. So there's usually only one Slayer and one Slayer only, but because Buffy was only dead for a certain amount of time and then brought back, it was enough time for a second Slayer to be called. And the reason I'm taking so long to do it is because I'm trying to remember that Slayer's name, and it has left me completely at the moment um, I can't recall it I'm sorry you know who I'm talking about um, but she died killed by uh, Drusilla and that in turn called Faith so Faith came to Sunnydale and in her eyes this was supposed to be my town but any time I do something I try to behave myself I try to be the good girl and whatnot. It's always Buffy this, Buffy that, and everybody's worried about Buffy and nobody's worried about me sort of thing. So there's a lot of jealousy in there as well. Um, yeah, so uh, her and the Slayer, she's living, in, she's living in Buffy's shadow. Um, she, again, as I said, in true James Bond fashion, she reveals what she knows about the Mayor's plan, which will culminate in his ascension on graduation day and uh, haven't learned all Faith knows uh, Faith drops the line at one point uh, Buffy's like I can't believe I fell for your crap and you know uh, 
I trusted you and whatnot. And Fifth Drops of Line, I'm the world's greatest actor. And uh, the whole time, and you know, just before he said it, uh, that whole sequence, I was kind of thinking to myself, something strange here, because they're having the, the two slayers are having this verbal showdown of themselves, and uh, Angelus is just going to stand in the corner, taking it all in. It's not very Angelus like, but whenever. Faith drops the, the information and says she's the world's greatest actor. Angelus pipes up and says second greatest. So he didn't turn. It's not Angelus. It's been Angel pretend to be Angelus the whole time. Uh, yeah. Buffy and Giles plan to infiltrate Faith. Uh, Buffy frees herself. Um... Yeah, this turns out to be a plan. I'm just looking at my notes there. And my England does not make sense whenever I write stuff down. For a guy that writes and produces his own content, sometimes my writing is absolutely disastrous. So, yes, Angel reveals that he's indeed Angel and not Angels. He's been pretending the whole time. Buffy has broken away from her restraints. Uh, they fight and... Uh, Eventually they get the upper hand, Faith runs. So it turns out Childs and Buffy come up with this plan. We didn't get to see that earlier in the episode. They kept that quiet from the viewer. Very good storytelling in this one. Um, the rest of the Scooby gang are as Buffy and Faith fight. Uh, they end up with knives at each other's throats. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a defining moment in the battle whenever they've got a knife to each other's throat and Faith tells Buffy that she can't kill her without becoming like her uh, and then kisses her in the forehead then runs out that's a great great little episode back at the library uh, Giles thanks and bids goodbye to the cloaked sorcerer who faked the spell to repay an old favour turns out this guy that the mayor hired was actually put into place by Giles um, turns out this sorcerer was under his wife was introduced to him by Giles. So they've uh, you know uh, the debt has been paid. Don't call me again. I'm not going to help you if anything else. Um, Wesley, he's angry that Giles arranged this behind his back. Um, he threatens to tell the Watchers Council about it, and uh, Giles is like, "No, I think he should. We've got a rogue slayer in our hands, and I can't imagine anything to be." more dangerous at this point so back at the Angel's Mansion Buffy and Angel are are both pretty shook up by what they had to do and uh, Buffy says she needs a break from Angel but uh, as she's leaving he asks are you still my girl and she responds with always and we cut to the credits so it's this is a, it's, yeah, I feel sorry for Angel at times. It's just, he's getting the short end of the, the stick. Uh, this is going to be something that is leading up to him departing at the end of this series to go on to his own spin off, which I absolutely love. Love that show. Fantastic. But, uh, you know, he's going to get the, the short end of the stick for. He worked this plan because Buffy asked him to, and in that, he had to pretend he wanted to be intimate with Faith while he was pretending to be Angelus. So the guy's getting on the shit for something that Buffy asked him to do. It's, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, great, great little episode, this one. Uh, yeah, I cannot believe that I had forgotten so much about it, but, uh, then, you know, class. That's going to do it for this episode, guys. I need to get off here now and get it uploaded because it's actually two minutes after its scheduled time to be online, so as quickly as I can, I get this up for you. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. Uh, email, hellmouthhotline, gmail.com. Uh, 
follow the show, share it along, do all good social media stuff. I will love you forever. And until the next episode, guys, stay safe. This has been a production of Coins Age Media. Thank you so much for listening.